Welcome back to the Matt Return Podcast. I'm your co-host, Zach Allen. And I'm Caleb Boyer. And we're back after the NCAA tournament. The season's over already. It feels like it just started, but, you know, it was a, it was a great tournament. Kansas City it was awesome. I love the venue. Um, and more importantly for our podcast, Penn State not only won again, but set multiple records in the process. Um, so I guess just to start, so, Caleb, what, what were your takeaways from last weekend? Well, my first thought was Penn State outscoring uh, Cornell, I believe, was in second place with 72.5 points. Outscored them by over 100, or not over 100, excuse me, exactly 100 with uh, 172.5. If you were to split the team, uh, you could take the first and second place team, or team trophies if you're Penn State, which I thought was really crazy. Um, I mean... The the, domin- the level of dominance is just unmatched. I mean, at, at this point, it's like no record's pretty much untouchable for Penn State. I wouldn't be surprised if they break the uh, 10 All-Americans in a couple of years or next year, you know. Yeah, and I mean, even going into the tournament, that was close. I mean, Davis and the Gal both lost uh, in the blood rounds. Um, so they were just one win away there from becoming only the second team to ever do that. But like you said, I think that's the first thing, you know, really everyone probably thinks of. 100 points, triple digits is really just unheard of. And, I mean, it it might eventually be broken. Records always end up getting broken. But, you know, the, the win margin record had been standing for close to 40 years, and they blew it out of the water by, like, more than 25 points and I just think it's going to be a while before we see any program kind of have a tournament with this level of dominance that Penn State had um, including Penn State um, I, I mean maybe next year they, they have a lot of guys coming back some leaving um, some returning so we'll see what happens next season but I think another takeaway for me was Tyler Kasak I think you know that winning a national championship obviously has a lot more glory to it and and you know he probably came into the tournament wanting to win that but he finished third after losing his first round match which is arguably harder than winning a national championship because you know you have to battle through you know being upset that you know you got upset so early um, by a guy seated uh, lower than you um, and then you have seven matches to get third place. And, you know, at the end there, he wrestled two of the top seeds at 149 pounds. He had never beaten Ridge Lovett before. He, he had lost, like, twice that season. Yep. And then, really, it, that match wasn't even close. Um, and then he defeated uh, the NC State guy, Jackson Arrington, and ultimately just won. I think that was ar- arguably, outside of Brooks and Starachi winning their fourth title, um, that was probably the most impressive feat, I think, of the entire weekend. Um, but yeah, those those are really just my takeaways. Um, do you think Penn State could, could potentially do something similar next season, or is this really just one of a kind? I, I guess it really depends. I mean, I assume Carter's not coming back, but if Carter were to come back, I definitely think that's on the table. Because right now at 174, you're probably looking at Facundo starting there next year, I would assume. Um, Because, like I said, I don't think Carter's coming back. But uh, you have Greg, who I believe should come back, Bo, who should come back. And then Van Ness will be healthy, and they'll probably redshirt Kasak. So all of a sudden, you have pretty much the same, I don't want to say the same lineup, but you just... uh, well, they'll have to fill so, uh, 197 in, but at 184, you're probably getting um, Josh Barr instead of Truax. So I still think it's going to be a really strong lineup. I'm not sure if they'll be able to beat their mark this year. I wouldn't expect it, though. Yeah, I, I also wouldn't expect it. Um, I think, you know, going down the lineup, uh, you also have Mitchell Messenbrink, who just fell short, and I think what was a, a miscommunication at the end there kind of feel for him um, a little bit because uh, he's a freshman. You, like, I'm sure going into that match, you know, 
he's his adrenaline is rushing and especially on the mat after the, sc the score did say eight to eight um, and card got the majority of his riding time in that first period uh, so maybe maybe he just forgot a little bit um, and you know didn't hear the coaching staff or something or I don't even know if the coaching staff was yelling at him I, I didn't really have a good view for my seat but I think he's gonna be next up I mean O'Toole's I think probably gonna move up Car's done there's really just it's him it's like his division I think does O'Toole have one more year I'm pretty sure okay so yeah I mean even with O'Toole I think you'd have a good shot I mean he was right there with um, Carr, even with the um, stalling calls, the uh, controversial yeah. stalling calls. Three, three stalling points. Yep, that's that was a lot. But yeah, just overall, there really I don't think was much disappointment. Disappointment um, that Penn State fans could find. I mean, I guess Braden not placing might have been a little bit of a surprise, but that weight class was chaotic like all season and even going into the tournament there were seven wrestlers that had been ranked number one and so it being the top seed at 125 was not just you know i'm gonna walk to the at least the quarterfinals or the semifinals it was a battle every single match um and yeah i mean the gal it was close but they were close like it's not like you know Drew Hildebrandt um, from a couple years ago where he was top five and then kind of collapsed down down the stretch there. Um, and I don't think he earned a point that season, um, a postseason. But, yeah, there's really wasn't anything to be unhappy about, especially with all the accolades. Now, postseason, we get to look forward to the Hodge Trophy. Uh, the finalists were announced today. We're recording this on Tuesday. Um, just got announced four Penn State wrestlers. Uh, who, Caleb, in your opinion, who 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 do you think it should go to? And you can say Keck Eisen if if you believe it's going to be Keck Eisen. I, I think he's going to finish second. I think it's going to be Brooks, and I'm not sure it's going to be close. Um, one of the categories they look at past accomplishments, and obviously Brooks has the four titles, and he beat Parker last year uh, pretty handedly. I think that in most other years, Parker probably wins. But just given the context with Brooks, I think Brooks is going to probably receive a majority of the votes. And yeah, and I mean, he had like 90% bonus point, the most pins of any of the uh, the finalists. I Undefeated, obviously. I, I really don't think it's close either. Um, I think going into the tournament, it was, or the Big Ten tournament, it was Carter, I think, was going to win it considering he had the, the 64 match win streak or whatever the exact number was. It was around there. Um, but unfortunately, the injury kind of, you know, forced him to take two losses. And I, I don't know if he'll still get it. But, yeah, I agree with you. I think there's there's a case to be made for, for like, Levi or Greg. But really, I kind of really agree with you, Keck Eisen has – no one was on par with him at that weight class all season. He kind of he really just cruised to a to a national championship. Yeah, I think he also had around like a ninety percent bonus percentage. He was like right below Brooks. I mean, like right below him. He had more um, tech falls and majors, but he didn't have as many pins. Yeah. So I mean, it's not like he had an extremely impressive year as well, but like you know. Like, like I said, most other years he probably wins. Yeah, so I, I think just in itself, though, you see four finalists from the same school it is incredible. I think, I mean, is this, do you, where, where does this team rank to you um, out of all the Penn State teams? That's, there's a lot of teams to talk about, but, like, just to you. I mean, it's got to be first, right? I mean, um they they broke two of the most prestigious uh, team records, I guess you want to call them that, team records. I mean, not only did they break the points record, they broke the margin of victory record too. So it's not even just um, the three-point takedown, increasing the amount of bonus points you can get. Like, 
I, I don't even think that was a, as big of a factor. I know a lot of people were talking about that online um, this week. But. but, yeah, Penn State has some guys coming up next. Um, I'm sure they'll be the favorites next year. Um, but in the meantime, that's – might be our last uh this might be our last podcast covering you know what happened during the season the season's over um if there's breaking news i'm sure we'll hop on here and break it down for all you guys but for now um i'm zach allen and i'm caleb boyer peace